Hey everybody, this is Brian, and this is our seventh Java video. Today we're going to be discussing methods. What is a method? Hmm. Well, this is a method right here, this public static void main. A method is a block of code. For example, we're going to say public, whoops, public void test, and brackets. What does this do? Remember, public is our access modifier, so this is available to the public. Void means it returns nothing. Test is the name, and then our parameter list. And we're just going to say system dot out dot print line. Hello from test. Oops and run it. Nothing happens. Why? Hmm. Well, we're not using the method. To use the method, type the method name with the parameter list. Uh-oh. Cannot make a static reference to a non-static method test from type start. What does that mean? Well, if you remember, static means that the class owns this, where public is the access modifier. Are those two related? No. They're both public. Static, once again, means this belongs to the class. This is not static. Meaning we'd have to create an instance of the start class. So let's do that. Now notice the syntax is a little different than what we've seen in our variable tutorials. We're saying start and then the name. So this is the class, this is the name, equals new start. So we're creating a new instance of this blueprint or this class called start. And then we're going to say mstart dot. And there's our test function. Now, notice that this is case sensitive. Meaning if you do test that, it tries to change it to uppercase and eclipse. Some older ones won't do it, and you're going to get an error because it lowercase is not the same as uppercase. So what happens when we run this now? Hello from test. So because this is not static, we have to create an instance of it. What that means is static is created when the class is loaded into memory. When you create an instance of that class, you need a non-static reference. Let's kind of drill that in here. And we'll say public static whoops, void do test. Actually, let's call this static. Static test. We'll say hello from static test. Now, let's just comment these out. And we're going to say start dot, and see how there is a static test. We've cre we have not created an instance of this class, yet we can access the static methods because the class is loaded into memory. Let's run it to verify. Yep, hello from static test. So what you need to understand is that static methods are loaded with the class. Non-static methods, you need an instance of that class, or you need an object to work with. Now let's uh, back up here. Let's make something a little different. Let's say uh, public. Uh, int, uh, we'll call this 10 years. We'll say int age. We're just going to make something that returns your age plus 10 years. Now you notice how this is complaining, saying this method must return result type int. What does that mean? Well, remember void returns nothing. Int. Void int. Okay. So we have to return an integer. Why they didn't say 
public static null? I don't know. It seems like it would have been a better convention. It's probably a holdover from the C++ days. Just know that we have to return an integer. So we'll say age plus 10. So when we call 10 years, we have to provide an argument called an age, and it's going to return the age plus 10 years. So let's do that. Let's say uh, start dot 10 years. I'm 36. And if we run this, what do you think is going to happen? Well, nothing's going to happen. Why? Because we're not printing anything out into the console. And let's just take our object here. And I'd really advise you get familiar with copying and pasting. It'll save you a lot of typing. And you see how we're saying system out print line, and then we're saying our object start, I'm sorry, end start. And we're calling the 10 years method. And we're giving it 36, and it spit out 46. So that's how methods with arguments work. Now, methods can have multiple arguments. And to do that, you just do a comma and then the other argument. Now, an argument is simply a type and a name. So we have int age, string name. Now this is also called operator overloading. Notice how we have two methods called 10 years. Whoops. But we have two different argument lists. To overload a method, you need to have a different argument list. Once again, these are two different methods with the same name, different argument lists. Now, when you go to do this, you see how there are two 10 years in your list. Let's actually move this down here so you can see what's going on. One calls age, one calls age and name. So you can call either one. Now, what do you think is going to happen when we run that code? Which one of these is it going to call? We've got a 36 and a name. Is it going to call this one? No. It's going to call this one. So a lot of times what you can do is call the other one. Saves you from redoing all your code. Let's say this is hundreds and hundreds of lines of code. Well, you don't want to redo that. You just want to add a little extra functionality here. Whoops. We're just going to print the name and then return the age. Let's run this. 46. Brian, 46. So you see it worked. We're calling this method right here, 10 years, with two arguments, spitting out the name and returning this method up here, which is age plus 10. Now, if this is a little confusing, I understand. This is a little daunting walking into it the first time. If you've worked with other programming languages, this was probably not a problem. So um, I thank you for watching. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining, and uh, I look forward to your feedback.